Ooh. All right. Hello, everyone. We have head coach Jim Fleming, quarterback Devin Farrell, wide receiver Marquise Buchanan, and linebacker AJ Pena. Worth noting, that was Rhode Island's seventh straight win, and Marquise became, yes, pause for applause. <laughs> and Marquise is the first wide receiver with over 10 catches since Isaiah Coulter did so 52 games ago. And, and, I, and I was there then. You can come in, tell me. Hello, Chris. Good luck. Thank you, buddy. Good to see you. All right. All right. I'll call you with all the problems. All right. Would well, you want my statement? Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's uh, it's been that way all year, hasn't it? I mean, you guys have been here. You guys have been watching the games. There's, there's. You know, you start thinking, oh, gosh, you know, you're not able to stop them. You're not able to you go throw interception on the drop pass. You end up getting 10 catches. You know, it's all about resilience. It's all about no flinching when it gets down. It's all about really good play, really good quarterback play the way I see it. I'm sure there'll be things that Murph picks it apart on, right? <laughs> and there's going to be mistakes, and I'll still come back and say that there's still better football out there for us. But, you know, there's – a little bit of, uh, you know, I hate to even say it. I won't even say it. We're in good shape. We're 8-1. and one. We're going down to Delaware to be able to play them, try to get a night. And we've done some things with this football team that a lot of people have invested a lot of time and energy trying to get us to that point. And we're riding these kids' shoulders. And I couldn't be prouder of, of how they prepare, how they play, how they stay in the fight, and end up at the end of the day finding a way to win. And that's the name of this game. Questions. Fun. What's been the difference this season? You know, I mean, you, you mentioned the eight wins, which obviously is a is a benchmark for this program, and you know, we've all been around the program for a while, for a while now. But what's been the difference? You know, that's a that's a tough one. I think you know that we got through October without a without a dip. You know, I think that's one thing. I think that these guys have really paid attention to the coaching, at least the overall perspective of it, and including the individual stuff that their coaches get them in position to make plays for. But my, my point I'm driving at is that a lot of coaches talk about it, about being short focused day to day, game to game, week to week. And I told them last night, I guess it was, you know, we started training camp. We practiced four days on, one day off. And that was a rack. And every rack we tried to get better. So that kind of fall fell into this season. First rack was in September, second rack was in in October, and now we're in the toughest rack that we got to be able to finish. So let's continue to get better and try to improve. Now, certainly, you look at some of the things we did today that you know put us in jeopardy, but we still found ways to be able to come out at the end of it with a you know stop when we needed it, a big play when we needed it, and you know just incredible resilience and ability to execute when it was needed. So. Well, John Wood said it be, you know, what is the top of the pyramid is, is be at your best when your best is needed. And I think this group has a lot of that in them. AJ, late in the fourth quarter, defense needs to stop. You walk me through just getting in there, trying to get that fumble recovery, and then how you felt coming up with the ball. Oh, man, um, it's a lot of words for that. But, I mean, I couldn't be more happy, you know. I mean, like... To have these guys, you know what I mean, the offensive side of the ball, you got Devin, who's young, and then you got Keats, you know, we already know about Keats, you know. I got all faith in these guys to the right of me, without a doubt, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of what the score is, like, I know, you know what I'm saying? If you give us time on that clock and give us a, time, uh, a chance to score, we're going to put that, that mother effort in there, you know. So, I don't wanna, uh, you know, that's Coach Fong right there. But, um, yeah, um, going in that last drive, you know, like, we thrive on third down. That's something we really harp on in practice, and, we like that situation against any team in the country. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, we saw the outcome out of that. So, very happy. AJ, what about the fourth down stop? Um, Big play in the game, obviously. Too which one? Game at that point. Which one? 28-17. 28 play in the backfield. Oh, oh, man. Um, huge. I mean, um, like I said, right, like that's make or break of the game right there. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, mom is a team. We see them take risks the whole, the whole game. You know, there was a fourth and eight. I believe they went for like the first series, so 
we knew that was coming, you know, to begin with. You know, very uh, really ballsy team, you know, but that comes with the number one offense, you know, quote unquote, in the uh, in the country. So, you know. Yeah. Devin, first pass of the game for you, intercepted. How are you able to move past that and then go, you know, twenty for twenty-five? Uh, I would say the guys I have around me, like I, I like AJ said, we have super, like so much faith in each other. Mm -hmm. So, I think that was uh, a whatever, like it was just there. You know what I mean? And you know, Keith had what over what fourteen catches, twelve catches, yeah, twelve catches. Like I trust Keith. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep giving the ball to him. So it doesn't doesn't matter what happened in the beginning. So. Marquise, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, an electric game for you. 171 receiving yards, two touchdowns, including go ahead, one in the fourth. Just what allowed you to have such a productive game tonight? Uh, like Dev said, the guys around me, just everybody, you know, they put belief in me after that first drop. You know, I took ownership of that one. Coach Plum said I had some plays to make up. Dev kept throwing me the ball. You know, the guys up front kept holding up. Wideouts were in there, routes, running backs just running hard. Opened up the play action game for us. So, you know, the guys around me, you know, that's that's all on them. Marquise, what did you see out there I mean, in terms of, from a matchup perspective? They had a hard time covering you, obviously. You had a great game. But but Coach Murph did a great job of also moving you around and putting you in a position where Dev can get you the ball. But what did you see from a coverage standpoint that allowed you to get open and, um, and finish? They pretty much played exactly what we went over in practice. You know, a lot of teams at the beginning of the season were kind of just like switching it up on us. But they played exactly what we thought they were going to play. Coach Murph called the right plays, and when he was down in, we find a way to win and execute. Marquise, I, I think against Brown, you caught all 10 of your targets. Today is 12 out of 14. What allows you to be so efficient in games like this? Uh, you never know how many targets you're going to get a game. You know, obviously, like, maybe some games you'll have three, four. But, you know, when you're getting targeted a lot, you got to make the plays when they come towards you. Mm -hmm. And I knew we was losing, so I knew any time the ball came my way, I had to make a play somehow, some way. Coach, now the fifth win that you guys have had this year while trailing in the fourth quarter. How valuable is it for you to just have a team that you know is so fearless and so resilient no matter the deficit or time? <laughs> Keeps me from a heart attack. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's, again, you know, you get in this game what you emphasize. And we emphasize the heck out of fourth quarter. That grew up in some time in training camp, just about trying to finish the last period of practice and try to relate it to what happens in a game. But it really comes down to, you know, you put the ball down and you get what you get. And if you can win it in the fourth quarter, great. You know, you'd love to be able to come out of the gates and have an easy fourth quarter someday. But I just don't think that's in, our, in the cards. I think you're playing good people every week. you got to be prepared to go the distance, and our kids can do that. Coach, each week you talk about it taking this season one game at a time. But eighth win on the year, considering the trajectory this program has been going, particularly in the last four to five years, are you starting to feel it now a little bit? No, well, I mean, I, you know, you, you've got, why would you ever change what's gotten to where you are? You know, we still have a lot to accomplish. There is no guarantee. 11 game season, I always said eight was a magic number. I don't know if that's true anymore. Don't really care. I mean, I know that we have an opportunity. We got three games left, and we have an opportunity to play in. You know, I think we, you know, we just have to go ahead and continue to get up tomorrow morning, go in, train a room, go get lifted. You know, coaches will get busy on the work, and we got to go down to Delaware on a bus and uh, get off that thing and do the best we can versus a pretty good football team again. But, uh, you know, it's – don't count your chickens before you hatches and you're you're in a special situation with this group. I mean it's special right now. I mean you're eight and one. I mean come on, whoever never thought Rhode Island would ever be eight and one. But you know, we still have a lot to accomplish and you know, I think that uh don't stop now. Jimmy, the couple mistakes today, obviously just the early interception and then uh, the reverse that gets blown up in the back. Oh, you're talking about that, but I've never seen an inter of a reverse <laughs> intercepted or one r run worse. <laughs> it was a bad play, man. Yeah. And Murph and Murph doesn't want to run reverses. He doesn't want everybody was on him. Hey, man, can we run in the reverse? And he called it, and then that thing happened. You'll never see a reverse here again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess lesser teams teams that don't have it going as well as you guys. Plays like that happen in they can't overcome it. How has this team been able to raise its, its breaking point, for lack of a better term, to the point where you know even killer mistakes like that 
don't derail you in the course of games. Well, we talk about that. You know, we talk about every team having a breaking point, and we pride ourselves on not being broken. So, you know, some bad happens. You gotta, you gotta answer. And I think that's what you, you had some really good answers offensively today. Some, you know, bad things happen, and then we'd be able to get a stop on defense, go all the way down the field and score. Um, you know, there's just a lot of stuff that went on in that game. We had to battle, and you have to. You can't focus on the bad things that happen. You can't, you know, stay too long on the good things that happen. You just got to go to the next play, and that's what these guys have been able to do, and it's 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 working pretty well for us. Yeah, the next play, you, you get a chance to do it all the time because you're a quarterback. You're going to start every play with the ball. But just mentally, how do you move on? Um, prayer. Like, I'm, I'm on the field talking to God a lot. So um, I feel like he keeps me sane. He keeps me grounded. And uh, we have a mindfulness lady named Stephanie. She, she, she's been helping me a lot lately with, like, my breathing and just staying present. So, um, like, a mixture of prayer and then the, the work that I do with Stephanie, I think, keeps me – like present. So. Do, any the, wrong. Go ahead. Thank you. do any of the players, um, like Coach was saying, there's been a lot of support of this program in the past couple of years, a lot of close moments in the game today. Just the crowd has been sold out two weeks out pretty much. How much does that help you guys in those close moments? Uh, it's great. You know, the atmosphere out there, it continues to get better and better for every home game. You know, the louder the crowd gets, you know, we feel like the bigger the moment. And, you know, we enjoy the big moments, obviously. So, but you know, just keep selling out, and we got to keep coming out and winning. We want them to keep coming back. We got to keep winning. Coach, what does that mean to you to have a sold-out crowd week by week? They're fun games. <laughs> you got a lot of people that are coming to this school. You know, whether they're coming as fans, whether they're coming as parents, whether they're coming as alumni, for a, a good day back on campus. You can't find a better environment to play football in this conference than the stadium. Can't find a better opportunity in a fall day. Beautiful skies, trees turning. I mean, come on. I mean, it's just it's it's magical. So I mean, it's means a lot that they're coming to support, and uh, you know, they need to continue to. We got to go to Delaware. Now we got one more home game. Truth be told, that's when the basketball is going to start to bounce, and everybody starts to split up here. I've got seniors that are coming in here, so it's a challenge to everybody out there for the next home game to get out there and send my seniors out in the right way. Because, you know, God willing, we'll have another game at Mead after the regular season, but we've got to celebrate their last game at Mead on, uh, when we come back here and play Albany. And I'd certainly like to see a sold out crowd not only support the team, but support those guys. There's some six year guys that have been through a lot of stuff putting us to where we are. We got a lot of guys that invested heavily in this program that are around in the locker room. They always welcome our ex-players, and these wins are very meaningful to them because they put in the same kind of work and commitment and sacrifice that these guys have. These guys have just found a way to put a team together that finds a way to win more than anybody else has since 2000. Awesome. All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you.